I don't know what a nutrient smells like, but I think this is it right here. Good. This is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This smells awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Abby from Science Around Cincy and today we're learning about dirt. Sure it's cheap and gets under your fingernails but it's also one of the most important things on a farm. Soil is where plants grow and where they get most of their nutrients. So what the heck is it? I'm here at the Gorman Heritage Farm to learn how they take care of soil to grow delicious fruits and vegetables. Let's check in with Crystal Gallagher, the Director of Education here, and start getting our hands dirty. Crystal. Oh, hi, Abby. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you so much for inviting us out here. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Gorman. Thank you. So what I was wondering is, what is dirt? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, I've got some dirt on my gloves right now. I got dirt on my pants. Hmm. I got some dirt in my house, too, I know. Is that what you meant? I guess what I'm actually wondering is, what is soil? Oh, hmm. soil is so important. Soil is what grows the plants. Okay. So there's four things in soil, minerals, organic matter, those dead plants and animals, air and water. We know that the plants come out of the soil, but what do the plants get from the soil? So what they don't get is their energy. They get their energy from the sun, and so then yeah. they pull up from the ground minerals that they need. And they use those minerals in all of their plant processes. There is a nutrient called nitrogen that they pull from the soil, and the nitrogen makes nice, green, healthy leaves. They get carbon from the soil and the carbon is what makes up plants so they need that carbon to build their plant bodies and there's also phosphorus mm -hmm. in soil and they pull that up and that phosphorus is what um, helps them make their flowers their fruit and their seeds so basically in the soil there's nitrogen phosphorus and carbon and they're all like different ingredients that help the plants do different things yeah we want to make sure that our soil is as healthy as possible to grow healthy food for us to eat. And ways that we keep the soil healthy is we add additional organic matter to mm -hmm. the soil. Um, and we also do something called cover cropping. Cover cropping is when you plant a kind of plant on your soil, but not to harvest. You're planting it because that plant can do things for the soil. So the cover crops is pretty much planting crops, but not to harvest as the final product, but to help other crops grow. Yes. Do you care if we go take a look at some of the crops on your farm? Yeah, we've got some cover crop fields here right now. Awesome, cool, let's go. All right, so we're out here in the fields. Right off the bat, you can tell the difference between this field here to the right and this one to the left. What's the difference here? Right, this one over here looks muddy and brown and, and just it's bare dirt. Mm -hmm. And this one still has all the green grass growing. Yeah. So this one still has cover crop growing on it. Uh, this field, the brown one, the muddy one, it's already been tilled or disked. The tilling can get the soil ready for planting. Seeds would have a hard time getting started here where the grass is really green and tall. Seeds want to have like a nice bare spot to get started. Mm -hmm. So tilling will chop the plants into the soil. If we've planted cover crops, that gets turned mm. into the soil, but also weeds get turned into the soil and that keeps the weeds mm -hmm. from spreading. So it pretty much makes the soil ready for planting. Exactly. We also have a variety of animals that we will rotate around this field. So for example, our chickens get moved through the green grass here. They eat the grass, and as we move them along, they poop. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Because poop has a lot of nutrients in it. Yeah. Especially chicken poop is really high in nitrogen. That's one of those macronutrients mm -hmm. that plants need the most of. Mm -hmm. That nitrogen drops onto the ground, and that's something that we till and work into the soil. So these chickens are out here working. Yeah. Um, also, the chicken is a product that we can sell. You know, we sell our chickens. Mm -hmm. We eat so, them. Yeah, so it's a win-win. Yeah, they're working two jobs right now. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so should we go ahead and test some of the soil to see if it's ready? That's a great idea. Awesome. We're going to do science today, right? Yes. So we're going to compare other soil types too. We're going to take a soil sample here, and we're going to take a soil sample in several other places too. Okay.
All right, so we just tested all of these soil samples here. We have the different um, pots of soil from all the three places that we sampled from. So we have the soil from the tilled field and then the soil from where the chickens were mm -hmm. in the field. And then we have, that's from the manure pile. That's right. So what we did was we went in and we have three individual tests for each pot of soil. So the tests will tell us if the soil is deficient in nitrogen or adequate or sufficient or even if there's a surplus. So looking at these, oh, let's just start with the nitrogen. This one looks more purple where yeah, the chickens that one's were. That one's definitely more purple. So does that mean that it has more nitrogen in it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Cool. So we can tell that those chickens being on the soil, it does help work some nitrogen to, into the soil. But let's look at the straight manure pile. Okay. This is the manure. Oh boy. Look how purple That's all the that nitrogen in the manure? Yeah. Wow. So we're up to N4 surplus. There's a surplus amount so of that's, nitrogen in there. So if there's a surplus amount of nitrogen, is that bad or can it be bad? It can be bad. Okay. Too much nitrogen in the soil for a plant means they focus too much on making leaves mm -hmm. and not as much on making fruit. Right? Yeah. So like if I want to eat tomatoes, yes, my tomatoes need lots of nitrogen, but if I have too much nitrogen in the soil, I'll get too much leaves, not, not enough, enough tomato. tomatoes. So that's why manure itself isn't necessarily a good growing medium for plants. Mm -hmm. You want to mix that manure yeah. into your other soil. The blue right. one is the phosphorus. Phosphorus is important for that fruit development and seed development. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to like save your seeds, you want to have seeds that are healthy and viable that can grow into new plants. You want to yeah. make sure that you have good phosphorus in your soil. And this one is really dark. Yeah. This is that straight up manure. A lot of phosphorus, a lot of nutrients. So we don't want to have too much or it throws off the balance of the minerals. After looking at these test results here, I feel like we learned a lot about our soil. What can the folks at home do to take better care of their soil? Right. Um, maybe you have a garden at home and it was really great the first year and not so great the second year. Well, maybe your garden is starting to become low in nutrients. Mm -hmm. So you can test your soil either with a simple at-home test like this or you can send it out to a, a lab, a soil science lab at That's a fun. university and get some really detailed results and find out what your garden soil is low in mm -hmm. um, and target add those nutrients. Now you could just add nitrogen by getting some nitrogen fertilizer mm -hmm. or you can fertilize your garden by adding compost yeah. to it or by adding other kind of amendments that you have around your house. And the good thing to do with your garden is to add a variety of things to your soil. Well, Crystal, thank you so much for having me today and teaching me all this awesome stuff about soil. I had a great time. I love soil. I want you to love soil and I want the folks at home to love and take care of their soil too. No, for sure. I learned a lot today. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Science Around Cincy. Do you love science? Of course you do. So stay up to date on all things science around Cincy by subscribing to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Sci Around Cincy.